In the name of God, the holy and undivided Trinity, amen. So, for the past three weeks, we've heard Jesus telling challenging parables, challenging the religious leaders. And I want to pause just long enough to say, let's not think he was only challenging them. He's challenging us too. And so today we kind of shift gears to the pushback. (laughs) The Pharisees sent their disciples along with the Herodians. Already kind of an interesting mix. Because the Pharisees and their disciples would have probably been very much anti-Roman Empire. And the Herodians would have been very much given that they were likely devotees of Herod Antipas, a puppet king, a client king of Rome, very much in favor of collaborating with the Roman Empire. So you have two extremes here represented, and they begin with flattery. You know, we know, Jesus, that you don't show any partiality, that you kind of tell it like it is. You're a straight shooter. What do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor? And Jesus, on one of his crankier days, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin. (laughs) Now, I always imagine that what happens next is one of the Pharisees or the Herodians digs in his pocket and pulls the coin out. Maybe they went and they found somebody and said, loan me a denarius. But even if they did that, they still know somebody who has the Roman coin on their person. (laughs) So you kind of see what's going on. Here you go. And already there's a dissonance. Catches us up short. Why, if you're making such a big deal about paying taxes to the emperor, do you in fact have the very coin on your person that you use to pay that tax? One denarius per year. And so Jesus asks the question, whose likeness is this on the coin? And what does the coin say? If you're curious, it would have been the emperor Tiberius And the inscription very most almost certainly would have been something to the effect of (coughs) son of the divine Augustus. Son of God. You see what's going on here? (laughs) To follow Jesus is to automatically say the emperor is not who he claims to be. The emperor is not divine. The emperor is not the son of God. And so already up front, we have this conflict, this challenge. Jesus not being willing to fall into the trap of the loaded question, because however he answers, right, he's going to get in trouble. Oh, sure, go ahead and pay the tax. Oh, no, whatever you do, don't pay the tax. Instead, he asked, who is this? Whose face is this? It was Tiberius. And what does it say? He's the son of God. And there's an implied question in my mind, almost as if Jesus is saying, do you really believe that? But instead, what he says is, then give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and give to God the things that are God's. And they went away amazed. It's man, we thought we had him. We thought he was going to fall for that. (laughs) But instead, they went away amazed. That question sort of troubles me, though, or the answer sort of troubles me, though. 
And I am one of those people who strongly suspects that when Jesus says, render unto Caesar, to use the King James Version, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's, I wonder if he's not asking or not saying, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, in other words, nothing, and render unto God the things that are God's, in other words, everything. Are we willing to take discipleship that seriously? Are we really willing, as people who profess the name of Christ, we proclaim Christ and him crucified, and we say we follow him, but are we really willing to take seriously the notion that everything we have and everything that we are and everything that we hope to become belongs to to God. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. It is a gift given to us. Our very lives are a gift. None of us decided to be born. Hey, I think I'm going to be born. I think I'm going to pick October 19th, 1966. That's going to be my birthday. I didn't choose that. <laughs> We don't choose this. We are called to this. And at the bottom line, all that we have belongs to God. All that we have, our very breath, our very souls, our very existence, is contained within God. And that can be kind of frightening. That can be challenging. We wonder, wait, can I really do this? Can I really follow Jesus if it means all these things? If it really means nothing is mine, it all belongs to God. It's all a gift. I wonder how that affects our thinking. I wonder if that pushes us out of our comfort zone or if we would just rather stay planted firmly where we are. Nope. I'm just going to leave it at that. Give to Caesar what's Caesar's. Give to God what's God. Not going to think about it too much. But what we're invited into is new life, is renewal, is a way of living where we give up fear and we give up worry and we recognize that if we're going to follow Jesus, then part of what we're going to do is push against the status quo, is live differently in this world because we are disciples of Jesus. We're going to live differently in this world because we recognize that our life is contained within God. What we have belongs to God. What we hope to become is God's plan, is God's doing, not something that we bring about ourselves. It's a gift, and it's a call, and it's a challenge. Do you really believe that your allegiance lies with the kingdom of heaven? Do you really believe that following Jesus makes a difference in your mind, and in your heart, and in your spirit? Have you seen the transformation that this brings about? And if so, the next question is, are we willing 
to live differently because of this good news? Are we willing to think differently because of this good news? Are we willing to speak out when we need to speak out? Are we willing to give generously when we're asked to give? Are we willing to make following Jesus the number one priority? had an acquaintance in the seminary. We were talking about this in Sunday school this morning, so bleed over from Sunday school to sermon. He used to say there is nothing more punk rock than being a Christian. Edmund was like massively tattooed. (laughs) So there's nothing more punk rock than being a Christian. That's an invitation to think differently to look at the empire, to look at the status quo, to look at the way we have always done things and be willing to challenge them when we need to. I think as Christians we live almost simultaneously as challengers and as celebrators. We celebrate and we challenge at the same time. We are grateful for what we have. It makes a difference to us, changes our attitude. And we see the sometimes shocking dissonance between the kingdom of heaven, where our citizenship is, and the kingdoms of this world. And we know that Jesus is weeping right along with us when we see the way things work. When we see wars and we hear rumors of wars, when we see people living in poverty in the wealthiest nation in the world, when the voices of regression are telling us, don't read that book, don't let my children read that book, Y'all, ideas are what change us. The idea that because of Jesus, our hearts are different, our minds are different, our spirits are different, makes a difference. It calls us to speak out. It calls us to live our lives in Christ in such a way that we are a counterexample because so many people wed the gospel to violence and greed and the way we've always done it. And Jesus is not calling us to the way we've always done it. The kingdom of heaven, thanks be to God, is about joy and it is about abundance, and it is about living life with a smile even when we feel like crying. It is about living life and not hiding our tears when we need to share our tears in this broken world that we live in. We live in a broken world We live in a broken world that is being changed and restored in Christ. And it's people like us who've seen that good news, who've seen the light of the resurrection and felt its power working in us, who find the courage to say, it will not always be this way. Who find the courage to say that love always wins, that grace always is available, that forgiveness always brings us home. It is a frightening, scary, wonderful, joyful thing 
that we have been called to do. And yet, it is exactly the thing that makes all the difference. Amen.